Hey guys, welcome back to the happiest hour on earth. Tonight we are in episode three of our best of series. So we've the last few weeks talked about a lot of our favorite rides in both Disneyland and Disney World. Tonight we're talking about the best of Disney bars yeah. and drinks in general, pretty yeah. much. Um, but focusing on both Disneyland and Disney World. So we're really excited. We've kind of talked about this stuff before. We even had an episode with Disney Bars blog talking about all their favorite drinks in Disney World and our favorites in Disneyland. But we just thought it would be a good idea to have kind of a concise episode on all the best of that Disney has to offer with their drinks. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so we're super excited to talk about this. As we've mentioned in the other Best Of episodes, um, we've had some people who haven't been to Disney in a very long time, and they asked, like, what do we need to do? And that was, like, all-encompassing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we were like, we want to do an episode of the best rides that people have to do to really just make their Disney trip feel fulfilled. But then also a lot of these people are adults, so we, you know, I hit them up with, hey, if you want a beer, you're going to want to check this place out. If you want a cocktail, you're going to want to check this place out. Um, because Disneyland is not only just for the kids, it's also for the adults. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to enjoy a nice, refreshing uh, cocktail in the parks, we want to let everyone know where the best places are to grab those drinks. And so yeah. we we're like, you know what? We have to add this into our series. Mm -hmm. And um, well, one of the places note. that, yeah, one of the places <laughs> that, came up as we, you know, asked about the best places for drinks. Um, and like you said, in our Disney Bars blog episode, they also mentioned this place as well. We mm -hmm. haven't actually been. It's in Disney Hollywood Studios. It is the Brown Derby Bar. Um, actually, I guess it's, it's a restaurant, but there is a walk-up bar. Yeah. 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 There's like a... Yeah, there's like a side bar that I've heard you can go to if it's like too crowded and you can't get in to sit. And yes. then you just walk around with your with your cocktail, which is amazing. Yeah. And so this is, we were going to make another drink. Um, we're going to make that in a couple of weeks. But this is the grapefruit cake martini drink. And um, so it looks amazing. I'm interested in how this is going to be. It's like such an interesting combination of yeah. flavors. I'm grapefruit like vodka, out. vanilla vodka, like cream. And then a dried grapefruit on top with a graham, graham cracker, cracker rim. rim. So random. I'm nervous. I I don't really. I mean, I kind of like the sweet tropical drinks, but I don't really. I don't usually go for like the sweet Martini. sweet dessert drinks. Yeah. yeah. So. And we've made one before on the show. If you haven't seen it, that was really really good. That was around mm -hmm. Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. That, that was, was a very amazing. desserty type drink, and it was delicious. But it is pretty rare that we make that type of drink on yeah. here. It's usually like just solid, like tropical cocktails or like, you know, the other whatever. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, the yeah. others. Not not so much like the sweet, the sweet, sweet desserty ones, but let's try it. I'm one. excited to try it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty I'm stoked. stoked. Are you ready? Yeah. Cheers. cheers. Whoa. Ooh. It's actually not as sweet as I it's thought. Not. It actually punches you a little bit. Yeah. Um, the graham cracker rim really brings about the cake flavor. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like it, it's pretty heavy on the alcohol. Mm -hmm. The way I'm tasting it. I'm going to try it again. Wow. Oh, no. I, I like that, though, because it's not too sweet where you, like, have a couple sips and then you're done. Yeah. Like, I actually... It's not super sweet at all. Yeah. Wow. It's really not. Uh, I, like that. I don't know. I think our ratios were fairly correct. Yeah. We did equal parts grapefruit vodka, vanilla vodka, and cream. Um, and from what I've heard, that sounds about right. And yeah, I actually dig that. That graham cracker rim, though, is so that good. That is good. I love Like the graham scent cracker. and the taste is so yeah. amazing. And the presentation is pretty cool, I have to say. Great. Yeah. I so like we will have a reel coming out for this on our Instagram shortly. So for sure. Actually, it might already be out by the time we yeah. have the episode posted. So oh, check out sure. our Instagram. 
Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So the first place we want to talk about in Walt Disney World, obviously everyone thinks about Magic Kingdom when they think about Disney World. Um, The thing is, is that there's not a lot of alcohol in Magic Kingdom. Um, The only place that you can get alcohol is Be Our Guest Restaurant, and they have a variety of beer and wine. Um, but it's extremely hard to get into be our guest. So, um, it's not like a, Hey, like I'm, I'm feeling a drink. Let's, let's walk over to this place and grab a drink. It's not going to be a quick, easy drink to get. Like you're going to have to probably already have reservations to get lunch or dinner there. Yeah. And then decide then that you feel like having a drink. (laughs) Yeah. And I kind I kind of like it. I dig it. Right. Like magic kingdom is going to be the most kid friendly out Mm -hmm. of the parks um, yeah, you don't want to deal sense. with anyone who's totally blasted. Um, <laughs> if you want to get totally blasted, you know the place to go. Um, maybe not totally blasted. Maybe just like <laughs> I mean, you blasted. definitely could. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, but, but don't don't, don't get do totally it. blasted. No, don't we don't want you to get kicked out of the <laughs> Disney parks. Um, do yeah. it in a get totally blasted in a very moderate way, <laughs> right? Like that's very contradictory. Know your okay. That's the thing. It's a know bad your advice. Know your like limits. It's a hard and thing don't. to know. I still rarely well, know my limits, but you know, you know, when you're drinking around the world, it's definitely hard. Split it. We actually recommend splitting drinking around the if world. If you're going with still another it, yeah. person, significant other, especially, just split all yeah. the drinks you get. Definitely. And if you're if you are going to Magic Kingdom, um, one of the things that we've been told, uh, we went there once, um, to Disney World. But a lot of people will say, hey, check out the resorts that are really close by to Magic Kingdom and you'd have a drink there, which is really great. But um, since there is not a lot, let's go ahead and jump to Epcot, which is like the mecca of drinks at Disney World. Yep. That's what we were literally just talking about. Yeah. Um, Epcot is definitely the place to go for any of your cocktail or any alcohol needs honestly there's beer wine cocktails like anything you could ask for because there's so many pavilions and each pavilion really caters to yeah you know what is popular in that country so like if you're in germany there's a lot of beer options if you're in italy there's a lot of wine options a lot of cocktails and, and all the other ones like it's easy to find what you want in epcot if you're the type that likes to drink in Disney. So we're going to start with um, where we started out when we drank around the world, which was the Mexico Pavilion at La Cava, which is inside the big Mexico Pavilion. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like in that big main building. It's <laughs> such a cool vibe inside. It really feels so authentic. Like you're just at like a market in Mexico or something. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah. great cocktails inside, lots of mar- like margaritas and tequila and that kind of thing. So we loved the avocado marg. That's what we got. And I know it's a very popular yeah. drink there. Definitely recommend it. It sounded really trippy beforehand. We were like, uh, that might be weird. But us and our group just decided that it sounded really good too. So, cause it's, it's avocado and like melon liqueur. So yes. They go really well together. Yeah. The melon flavor nice. comes through and it is just like really delicious and like creamy kind of yeah. from the avocado. Don't Highly let recommend. it scare you. It, yeah, it no, is it actually weird. pretty good. We if were you've nervous. never had it, and it trust me, you'll love it. I, yeah. I guarantee it. That, like, because avocado is not like a strong flavor. So you really yeah. don't taste any of that. It just gives it a nice like green color. Yeah. And it tastes like melon. And the rim is really nice. I forgot yeah, what the rim hibiscus. is. It's hibiscus. Yeah. yeah hibiscus, hibiscus sea, sea salt. salt. Really, really delicious. You so want good. to start your drinking around the world here. And by the way, a lot of these other uh, parks are going to be shorter. But we decided, you know what? Epcot's Drink the around Mecca. the world is... <laughs> is such a big deal. So we are going to talk about each one as we go around the world. And so... um. Next up, right after Mexico, is going to be Norway. And so here you could find the, I'm probably going to butcher this name, but the Kringla Bakery Cafe. 
Um, I think when we were in Norway, we got like an, I think it was an Einstock beer. Just, we just went beer in Norway, um, a Norwegian beer and we called it a day, but there is something, um, at this cafe called the, and again, I'm going (laughs) to murder the name, um, the Lini Aquavit Glacier Shot. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say that when you order this, it's almost like a, um, challenge to, drink this shot without making a face in front of the Disney cast members. So I don't know if they're still like doing that, but it's it's like a thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I heard it was a little more licorice It's not like your normal shot. It isn't, I think it's like 80 proof, so it's like a normal like 40% mm. alcohol shot. But I think it is so interesting that the cast members just want to see your reaction. So it's almost like a challenge of like, let me just take this shot. There's also this like Viking coffee that you could get in Norway that I've heard a lot of great things about as well. Um, but yeah, you could get so any kind of drink time. in Norway. If you want to take it slow, grab like a, a light beer and then um, go to the next. But if you want to, if you want to take it fast, take that Aquavit shot and, <laughs> uh, and just go hard. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fun. We didn't get to do that, but I would love to give it a try. Maybe we should just buy Aquavit here. Is that something you can do? Yeah, you can. We'll just do a shot on the podcast. We'll film it and we'll put it on Instagram and you guys can judge if we make a face or not. Okay. Oh, for sure. (laughs) That'd be awesome. (laughs) Sounds fun. Okay. So next we're moving on to the China Pavilion in Epcot, which uh, houses Joy of Tea and the drink that we have heard is a popular one is called Tipsy Ducks in Love. I heard a lot of things about this one. Interesting name. Sounds very fun and tasty. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it's a bourbon coffee tea and chocolate flavor. Yeah. Um, Maybe the coffee will give you a little boost to get you know, yeah. around the world. Sounds pretty crazy, but I, I would be... Totally down to give this one a try. We did not try this one when we were there. I can't I don't even recall. remember what we. Yeah. We got some sort of cocktail. I think I don't remember it because two stops in, I was already <laughs> blasted. No, just kidding. No, um, no. I remember true. most of most of my time around the world. I don't remember what we had in we China. We didn't get this one. I think it was like a lychee, or was, was that, that in Japan? Li- you know what? We had a green drink in Japan. So I think in China maybe we had the lychee something. Yeah, that sounds right. We could. I can't wrong, remember. But yeah, we. Had I know something. that I had a picture of it because I remember taking a picture of the drink in front of the China Pavilion, and it looked really cool. But I don't know if I kept it. Lychee is awesome. Anyways, so yeah, whether we got this drink. from here, Japan, something, it was it was awesome. Yeah, was so good. And this one sounds really good. So yeah, next time we go, we'll have it. We'll have it's a, a popular try. one. It won't make it here for sure. Yeah. Um, next up, we are going to Germany. Um, this is at Summerfest. Summer, Summerfest. S O M M E R. Summerfest. Um, and this is the Schaufenhofer. Schaufenhofer. Probably saying that incorrect as well. Schaufenhofer. But this is actually one that you could get pretty much anywhere. This is a mm-hmm. nice grapefruit beer. Yeah, we bought it. Um, the store here before. Yeah, I, 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 it's so refreshing. This is great for someone who um, is not like a big drinker, but maybe wants something refreshing and nice crisp. during the summer. Yeah, crisp. It's a I nice think it's beer. like a, it's, it's like a four, three. It might even be a two percent. Like it's, it's mainly grapefruit. Like yeah. it's, it's pretty it's light. It's not very strong. Um, that's true. Which is a nice break, right? You're like, you're going, you're like on your fourth pavilion, right? Is that the fourth? And then you're like, okay, let's get a little nice <laughs> water. Not really water, but uh, something beer, a little, not not water. not as intense <laughs> beer. Um, and so you're gonna want to get your Schaufenhofer uh, at Germany, and um, and that's all I could say about it. It's crisp, refreshing, delicious. It is. It's really good. I yeah. do remember having that one there. It's, it's a good choice. Yeah. Um. Next, we're moving on to Italy, which Italy. is. Very dear to my heart. We actually got to go to Italy for real in 2017, I think. Yeah, 17. It's been a while, but we got to go to Venice, which was like a bucket list thing for me ever since I was in high school. So shout out to that trip. That was amazing. Um, But in the Italian pavilion in Epcot, there is somewhere 
Say it. Do it. <laughs> it's called Tutto Italia Ristorante. Oh, that's pretty good. And it's probably like also that. wrong, but hey, um, there is a Bellini there, which is a classic Italian cocktail. I do recall having one in Venice. It was delicious. Amazing. Authentic Bellini. Um, and I don't think we even had this. I think we just got wine when we drank around the world in yeah. Italy. But did you just eat the grapefruit? Sorry, that was so weird. That must have been really weird because be it's dehydrated. You're not really supposed to actually eat them. It's just for looks. I didn't like it. Is it chewy and gross? It's um. Well, grapefruit in general is super bitter. It just became I'm way more I'm trying to put bitter. on a nice face right now. Oh, I don't know why you just not, did that. It's not a good, not a good flavor. But yeah. I anyways, I, okay. I thought I'd do it secretly. You know. No, I heard you yeah. chewing, and I was like, "You did not just eat that." It was bad. <laughs> okay. Anyways, <laughs> you gotta go for a Bellini in Italy because it's a classic cocktail. So yeah. definitely check that one out. Yeah, it's like a peach and prosecco kind yeah. of deal, and I, I did mm-hmm. that. Very refreshing. Very refreshing. Sweet, um, fruity. Yeah, you can't you can't beat sweet and fruity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as you make your way around that, you know, what's it called the, the world bend. showcase. Yeah, oh, yeah, as you make your way around, <laughs> we got fife and drum. Um, so a lot of these cocktails that we've heard about in the past, I I couldn't really find them anymore. Like I heard there was a frozen mint julep there. And I was trying to find if it was still there, and I couldn't really uh, see that. They must and then rotate. we also they, they probably they must rotate, rotate every yeah. so often. Um, we also got a uh, someone from we we asked our followers on Instagram like, hey, what is the best place to get a drink uh, at Disney? And um, sh- well, I'm gonna ruin this name as well, but uh, Shell Design Co. Shell Design Co. I think I think I said that right, but um, they are amazing, right? Disney home decor, but they said there was this moonshine there. I don't know if it was a frozen moonshine or just like a moonshine in general. That was really, really good. Um, I didn't see that on the menu, but just trying to like ask around or like kind of Google search to see if it's still there. Mm. Um, because I mean, moonshine in America pavilion, like that just kind of goes together. But what (laughs) we saw, I think I just got a beer when we were here. I must have just like had a little bit of your beer then because I don't remember getting a drink in the American. As long as you have one little sip. Still counts, right? Yeah, it still counts as drinking around the world. Um, But (laughs) what we saw that was like very popular was at Fife and Drum, the frozen red stag lemonade. I heard it's really, really nice, really refreshing. And very American. So uh, if you do make a stop in the American Pavilion, definitely check that out. Yeah. Um, but next on, after we move past the American Pavilion, we find ourselves in... Japan. Yeah. So here you will find Garden House, which houses the Tokyo Sunset. We believe it's there. I think it's there. I, At I the remember time, it being there. Uh, it was Food and Wine Festival. So I think... We got a drink outside, didn't we? In Japan? Yeah, there was. Uh, it was outside that we got the drink, and I I believe it was Garden House. It's weird when there is a festival because there's like kind of throws you off in terms of yeah. like what is where, like and how it normally is. So I don't I really believe recall. It's House. Yeah, but yeah, I think it was there, and we actually didn't get a Tokyo Sunset at that point. But we have made a Tokyo Sunset yeah. on the show, and it was delicious. So we can vouch for it being a good choice if you're yeah. in the Japan Pavilion. I think we got like a Midori something yeah. there, right? It was green and it was That's delicious. Right. But um, after making the Tokyo Sunset for our page, which by the way, just like go to our reels, scroll down. Uh, one find of our a first lot of ones. The um, about. <laughs> yeah. And that thing was amazing. Yeah. So good. So good. Um, so refreshing. So definitely one that you have to try in Japan. Um, Next up, we got uh, Morocco Pavilion. This is at Spice Road Table. By this time, I was getting a little fuzzy. What we drank? I have no idea what we drank here. Um, um, I remember it was really good. We have a photo of it. We have a photo of it, but I'm, but not like a photo of it. I like, remember, like I kind of <laughs> like recall what we actually like inside yeah. the drink. Yeah. I don't recall what it was, but I remember it was really good. I was down. Yeah. And we shared, it was like a blended drink. Okay. 
I remember that. And it was kind of like coconutty or not, maybe not coconutty, but like nutty somehow. Nutty somehow. Okay. I don't know how to explain it. Well, but it was so good. since we, um, but this time we were just, you know, blacked out. Uh, and apparently, <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. We're not blacked out. I was we were, sweating everything we were out, out, to be we were very honest. Out. It was such a hot day in Epcot when we were there. Everything I drank, yeah. I think I was just sweating it right out. So I yeah. didn't, I didn't feel much by the end of the I, day, Yeah, I, I agree. But but it was a blur. It was a little yeah. hazy. Um, yeah. But one that we saw uh, that a lot of people love is the Andalusian Nights. Andalusian, Andalusian Nights. Nights. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, so check it out, and if that sounds good, definitely do it. But um, that could be found at the, yeah, if I didn't say it, the Spice Road table, um, which is great. But you got France, which we have made as well. Yes. Um, we super have. Super good. Uh, in France, which is where you would be heading next if you're drinking around the world, Levine. 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 There's actually Levine's. more to this name, but I didn't even write it down because I was like... I feel like people just got Levine. Probably. Levine. Um, yeah. But you'll find the Grand Marnier Orange Slushy, which, yes, we did have there and we made here on the show as well. Yeah. That's a really good drink. It's it's blended. It's got, I can't recall what else it's is Grand in Marnier it. Grand Marnier. Grand Marnier, obviously. And then like. On the look, yeah. Yeah, it's been a bit. That was like pretty early on in our show in our that show, we made yeah. that actually. But that's a really good drink, I have to say. I remember it being very enjoyable on that hot day. Yeah, super delicious. Super great. Definitely a staple in the drink around the world. So definitely yes. check it out. Um, and next up, we only have two more left here. Uh, two more pavilions. Um, we got the Rose go, and Crown. Uh, I know, yeah, we're, we're doing a lot of drinking in the world, uh, mm -hmm. but it's honestly, it, like you said, it is a staple it's of everything drinking and Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rose and Crown, which um, I heard we haven't actually got this. Maybe we should make it on a show. The Welsh Dragon. Uh, mm. This is the UK Pavilion. I believe at the Rose and Crown. Um, what did we get? Did we get? I was just trying to remember that. Did we go to Rose and Crown? We did not go in Rose and Crown um, because it was very it? packed. It was very like, you know, it was hard to get into at the time. Rose and Crown, by the way, guys, is a great UK style pub. Um, yeah. A lot of people just love to hang out here. Um, it was very busy when we went, and so we just got a, a cocktail or a beer um, yeah, at one of the been. booths. I think maybe they did one of those. Like, UK is very popular uh, or, like, very good at those, like, halvesies drinks where, like, you mix a cider oh, and a beer. Oh, that's And I feel like we, we got, did, like, a I cider think. beer kind I'm of I'm pretty drink. sure that's yeah. what we did. That rings a bell. It's like the snake, snake something. Snake bite? Snake bite, I think. And it's, like, a, a cider beer combo. Yeah, um, I remember and we that. got that. By the way, guys, this is a uh, second to last pavilion, so obviously we don't really remember it too much. But I've heard a lot about Rose and Crown, though, and yeah, I'm so sad that we didn't get to actually like really check it out. It's we, we only there. had one day in Epcot, and um, guys, if you're going to Disney World, do over a week. You're you're gonna need an yeah, over a yeah, like we if did like we six had days. Gone back to Epcot because I feel like we were trying to like. Drink around the world and get all that done and then like we do rides and stuff too. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, it was kind of like a packed day. So I we needed more, more time. days in Epcot for, for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. But that brings us to the last pavilion, which is Canada. And at the popcorn stand, apparently you can get a Crown Royale maple, which yeah. sounds really tasty. I tend to like things with Crown Royale yeah, for some reason. Crown Royale is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And with maple, it sounds very Canadian. So yeah. I don't know what else is in this drink, but apparently it's a popular one and it sounds very tasty and very Canadian. Uh, before we move out of Epcot, real quick for the kids and the non-drinkers, Club Cool. Um, in Future World, Club Cool has like so many different coca-cola beverages from around the world which so is cool. so awesome and i believe from what i saw we actually didn't go into club cool um but i i believe you can go in there and like taste a lot of these different coca-cola beverages from around the world for free um if you want a bigger portion of them then you have to pay but there's like 
That's so, so cool, cool because like it's like beer uh, tasting but for kids yeah exactly and not and, alcohol um coca-cola really knows its um international audiences very very well where like in the italy um region there is a little more bitterness to the uh soft serve drinks over there mm-hmm. Um, and there, isn't that interesting? Like how yeah. you know what? What's the uh, what's the drink that you? Oh, hate? the um, aperol spritz. Aperol spritz, like aperol in Italy, Not is so it. popular, and just bitterness is so popular, I guess, in Italy. But they really cater <laughs> uh, to the regions, and you get to try many different drinks from around the world in mm-hmm. there. So um, that's kind of like a little kid bar or a Fun. non-alcoholic bar. So if you are wanting to drink around the world, you're still able to at Club Cool. So right after Epcot, we are going to go to Animal Kingdom. And so there's not too, too many that we want to bring up here, but we asked this on our uh, on our social media, on our Instagram, you know, what was the best place to grab a drink at the Disney parks? And um, two people hit us up and said Nomad Lounge. Uh, and we've heard about Nomad Lounge throughout our years, just loving Disney. And and so we, we made wanted a to bring this up. from their ones, actually. We did. Jen's tattoo. And it was delicious. Awesome. So, so good. That was like up there on my favorites, actually. It was super refreshing and just a killer cocktail yeah. in general. And I really never knew about Nomad Lounge until we made that, I don't think. Yeah. And it's, it's awesome. So it's found in Animal Kingdom. This is part of the Tiffin's restaurant. This was inspired by the Imagineers trip to come up with Animal Kingdom. So a lot of the Imagineers went out to different countries in Asia and Africa and really kind of immersing themselves in the culture of these different continents and um, mm-hmm. tried many different foods, many different uh you know, beers and cocktails. And so the Nomad Lounge really kind of has this like relaxed, comfy, loungy vibe, but one that you would find in like Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think so a lot cool. of the the food menu is kind of based on that, but also you could get a lot of beer from like Thailand and Kenya and a lot more. And I think the cocktails are really crafted around that. I love um, that. I know. So cool. It's so awesome. And we actually did not have a chance to go to this. Um, but from what we've heard from some people, and we had two Instagram followers who did suggest this place. We had Jess at Joffrey's and then the Pixie Dust Pals. And um, the Pixie Dust Pals actually told us, like, it's kind of like this little oasis in the middle of the park. Um, and it was the best kept secret until like today like now everyone knows about it and you have to get a reservation um and be put on the wait list as you enter the park which is which is bummer because you you always want to kind of know that in um but from what i've heard while researching this place like there is an outside balcony that um i think overlooks the pandora walkway but also the river that's there too And apparently it's just really, really serene and beautiful. And so if you're able to get that section, it's really, really great. That sounds awesome. Yeah. I really, really think I would prioritize hitting up Nomad Lounge next time. Definitely. And I love the theming. Yeah. It's awesome. so beautiful. Next, we're going to just chat about the Rum Blossom uh, at Pongu Pongu. Yeah, which so good. we made on here on the show, and it was so delicious. I think when we were in the park, we had it without oh, the yeah, rum. Without the alcohol, we yeah. just got the regular like slush of it, which was also delicious. I think it's called the Night Blossom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're looking for a non-alcoholic Night Blossom, yeah, yeah. Super yeah. Good. But the Rum Blossom is that, but with rum added to it. So. Super delicious, super beautiful, like colorful so drink. Great. It's blended. Um, one Is of my like favorites we've made. Red, green, red kind of deal, right? Kind of like Jonah? pinkish red. Yeah, pinkish red. yeah. So, yeah. And so like beautiful. boba balls, which just adds so much to it. Yeah. I remember just being like obsessed with it when we had it in the park and then having it here was so great too so definitely get that one if you are in pandora uh so we're gonna move on from here to the next park which is hollywood studios um so we haven't talked much about beer but this is a great place to grab 
different types of beer if you're in Hollywood Studios. This is called the Baseline Tap House. And so we we went to this place and it was just so awesome because you can get a nice good old flight. Mm-hmm. Um, try different types of beer that you haven't had um, yeah. and they, they have a great selection, you know, mm-hmm. a very nice variety. And, um, it's just like the perfect afternoon chill spot. Yeah. Um, also great food. Um, great snacks. I think they have like a Bavarian pretzel, mm-hmm. I think pizza too, but like a great place to just like hang out and chill as you're about to start your second half of the day. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we did that when we were there, and it was such a nice little break in the day because it was like the heat of the day, too. And it was like, ah, oh, some crisp beers sounds so nice right oh, now. So, so what perfect. we had to do. It was a great stop. Yeah. Um, next, we're going to talk about the Brown Derby, which is where these drinks are from. Yes. Um, it's like, <laughs> it's modeled after like old Hollywood. Um the way that I always knew the Brown Derby was from love it. I Love Lucy. If you have ever seen that episode, you maybe know what I'm talking about. But there's an episode where they go to the Brown Derby in the show. And it was always like my family's favorite episode. It's just really funny. Um, so I remember when we were in Hollywood Studios that day, I saw it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's the Brown yeah. Derby. I was like so excited. We didn't get to go for real, but it's just such a cool theme um, for this bar restaurant. Um, And I don't really know. I don't know, like, specific drinks aside from this there. I'm sure they offer, like, any of the classic cocktails um, because it's very old school style in there. I've also heard that the Cobb salad there is, like something you have to get oh gosh I'm, for I'm some reason that. yeah, yeah I, I've, I've heard that that is like everyone's favorite thing from the brown derby oh so gosh. this is obviously the drink episode we're talking about but i've heard that so ooh, that sounds good yeah um yeah and i i don't know if the inside is like legit modeled after the original brown derby but yeah. how cool it probably, it, it probably is. is right like how cool is that to like sit and eat in a replica of the world famous brown derby where yeah. so many uh, actors go yeah. and eat. Um, it was like the hub of where all the celebrities used to like go eat uh, and you know get their drinks and stuff so I love that pretty cool. so cool uh, the last one here and this is also in Disneyland is Ogus Cantina you've probably already heard a lot about this um, you definitely have to get reservations but this is in Star Wars land. Um, perfect vibe. Like pr- oh, yeah. everything like is so great here. Yeah, uh, it really doesn't I get mean, too much better. Environment is great. Cocktails look very otherworldly. Beer is at Disneyland and I'm sure at Disney World too are like local brews that they brew mm-hmm. specially for uh, mm-hmm. Ogus Cantina. Really, really cool. So this is definitely a must do. Definitely a must yeah. do. But also can be very hard to find a reservation for. Yeah. So if oh. you are not on Mouse Dining yet, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, definitely do that before you're going on your trip because you probably won't find a reservation if you haven't booked it like months in advance. Yeah. Mouse but Mouse Dining is, awesome. is hugely helpful. If you get on there, you will probably like I think we got our reservation while we were on our trip. We yeah. just get got the it. premium. Yeah, subscription you'll sure. get a text saying that there is an available um, opening yeah. opening for a reservation, and you just make it right then and there. So, yeah, Oga's is great. It is. It is. Um, as we go into Disney Springs, you could you could list the first one, but the coolest thing about Disney Springs is they have a like the same liquor license, you know, throughout all the bars at Disney Springs, which means. You actually like grab a drink at one place, and I believe this is still true to this day. You grab a drink at one place and just walk around with that drink, and then go to the next place. So cool! Which is like the coolest thing I ever. That's so Orleans. like New Orleans <laughs> yeah. vibe. Yeah, I love it. It's so great. That's the thing, New Orleans as well. Yeah, so fun. Um, but the first one that we're going to talk about is called Wine Bar George. We've heard a lot about this. Um, it's a wine bar that houses 140 wines. 
And George, who is the owner of yeah. this place, is a master sommelier. Um, he is one of only 269 in the world it's that are crazy. master sommeliers. So that is like pretty impressive. Uh, if you know, like kind of the wine world, that's that's pretty, pretty awesome. But um, it is the only master sommelier led wine bar in Florida. That's crazy to think about. It's like, so cool. Florida is such a hot spot destination. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only. So it's crazy. Disney Springs is where you're going to find all the best, the best wines wine of dude. Florida. Yes. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, you can get bottles, you can get glasses, you can get ounces of wine. Like it's, it's, it's a good variety and there's you know i'm i would assume there's like every possible type of wine you could want we didn't get to go here but i do recall chatting with disney bars blog about this place as well and they were highly recommending it and saying how awesome george himself is <laughs> yeah. he's like he's there a lot and you can like run into him and stuff so so cool next up we got raglan road in disney springs and so this is another one that a lot of people talk about. Uh, this is an Irish pub. Um, great, like, beer, but also great entertainment. There's, like, a lot of good, like, river dancers here. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of good entertainment. I heard there was, like, three different bars throughout the place. But if you want, like, good Irish food, good Irish beer and, and cocktails and all that stuff, and just vibes, Irish vibes, yeah. like, this is where you want to go if you're in disney springs i was heartbroken that we didn't get to go here it was like my goal because i had heard a lot leading up to our trip about how amazing it was and i was so hoping that we would get to go and it was like a really really long wait to go <laughs> yeah sit down and eat when we were there so we were just like we're starving we have to find something else so we never got to go back yeah broke my heart but maybe next time um because i've heard it is so amazing so Next up, we have Homecoming, which was one I never knew about until Disney Bar's blog. Once again, they had a lot to say about Homecoming. So there's a lot of moonshine here as well, just like we were yeah. saying at the America Pavilion. Um, there's like refill glasses that you can get for the, they have like a lot of like pre-made cocktails with yeah. moonshine, I think. And maybe, the, the pre-filled ones, too. it's it's weird. It looks like a barbecue sauce, like yeah, container. Yeah, but you it just does. pay like fifteen bucks and you get like straight up moonshine. Yeah, in these containers, like moonshine crazy. cocktails, right? Like it's yeah, like yeah, a straight yeah. Up yeah, it's not straight up moonshine. It's <laughs> like, moonshine cocktails. I don't feel like that would be legal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Moonshine's pretty strong, I've heard, but. Yeah, so that is kind of what Homecoming is known for, I believe. It's also, I mean, it's a restaurant as well, so they have a lot of food lot items of as well. Food, for sure. Looks great, honestly. I'm like so bummed that we didn't know about this when we were there. But yeah, definitely a lot of good moonshine cocktails. Yeah, I dig it. Um, so next up, I guess I can get these last two if you want to get like start off the resorts. But mm -hmm. um, so. There's this place called the Edison in downtown or in uh, Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. I was about to say downtown Disney, but Easy this is a very laugh. like steampunk gothic industrial style bar. It looks um, super they cool. have a story behind the whole thing where it's like supposed to be an old power plant that got turned in like it shut down and got turned into this like bar almost has a speakeasy vibes, but it's not really. Yeah. Um, but apparently the cocktails here like traditional cocktails that you would love are just like incredible here. Mm -hmm. uh, live music. You get like stilt walkers, aerialist um, wow. and so much more. Like a but show. the vibe is really, really cool here. Um, it's not just like your standard bar. Oh, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get my, my drink. Like you're almost enveloped in the story mm -hmm. and, and you could see just search um, the Edison Disney Springs. I mean, they created certain areas to make it really feel like it was an old power plant that is now used as a bar. Um, the huge like spire outside. 
Like it looks like a power plant, and then um, inside so just sick. has this, like very nineteen forties, I guess, like feel of the bar. It's so awesome. You guys it have to check super it out. Super fun. Yeah, it, it's awesome. And then um, I guess I'll just go here too because in the end, I mean, in the end, Jones is like my favorite. Right? No, oh, yeah, um, do your thing. The last place in Disney Springs, Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. This is based off of. Uh, Indian Jones's friend, who is that pilot in the the original movie, um, Jock Lindsay, and so this is a like a 1940s style airplane hangar. There's a lot of like great classic, um, but also like Indiana Jones like inspired cocktails here. Mm-hmm. Um, and we unfortunately did not get to go to this last time we were wah, there. Wah. Another know, one that we I know. <laughs> so sad. So crazy. Disney Springs, we honestly, again, you need man. a full day or two to uh, experience all the amazingness For that real. is Disney Springs. Where with with downtown Disney, downtown Disney is great, but Disney Springs Pretty is just small. beyond. Yeah. Anything that you can imagine. And we seriously Disney. only got to spend one evening checking out Disney Springs. It was, it was so, so short lived, which made me so sad because we just never made our way back over there, which is like, it's a bummer because I know that there's so much that we missed over there, but it kind of goes to show like the difference between Disneyland and Disney World because everything on Disneyland property is pretty like walkable. Like, yeah. even if we wanted to go from one of the parks to Trader Sam's, which is by the Disneyland Hotel or, you know, like everything is within walking distance, which is great in and of itself. It's, but, yeah, it's yeah. nice and convenient. And, you know, in Disney World, it's like we just never were able to, like, transport ourselves back over to Disney yeah. Springs because our days were so wrapped up in being in the parks and then we were exhausted and didn't feel like going out again to go to Disney Springs at the end of the day. So I'm so bummed that we didn't like I have know. a day dedicated to Disney Springs. I think we just need to like carve out yeah. more time next time we go because I'm like really bummed with how much we missed there. For sure. I feel you. But I feel you. Sorry. Uh, were you finished talking about Jock Lindsay? Oh yeah. Yeah. I go point? for it. We'll go quickly through resorts. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to resorts, we're going to talk about the Enchanted Rose, which is found at the Grand Floridian. Um, and it is themed, as it as its name suggests, after um, the live adaption of Beauty and the Beast. So I think it's very elegant and kind of on the fancier side, it sounds like. Um, there's different rooms that you can visit. Is, is it like... Like you can sit in different rooms, or can you yeah. like order drinks and like food in different rooms? I think you're or how does like, that work? yeah, I think you're situated in different rooms, so almost like beer guest, where there's yeah. that like three, I but say, I guess there is like a little that. bit more at the Enchanted Rose. And um, the interesting thing that I like about this place is it used to be a different type of bar, um, that had no real theme. It was just like a fancy mm. bar. But I think Enchanted Rose in live adaption of Beauty and the Beast actually fits the Grand Floridian pretty well. Where yeah. it like brings in Disney, but in a very subtle way. Yeah. Like it's it's I elegant like subtle. I like that. I don't know. That's cool. I really dig it. Sounds fun. Another one that we obviously did not get to check out. But anything yeah. within the Grand Floridian is going to be amazing. So. Yeah, definitely. Definitely go to that one. Um, and we'll 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 save that middle one for for the end here. But real quick, uh, there is this place if you are wanting some entertainment, Jelly Rolls Dueling Piano Bar. I believe that's the full name of it at the uh, Swan and Dolphin. Um, I heard it's so much fun. Yeah, I've heard there that is too. like this is like the party vibe. I mean, obviously not party as in like a DJ, but there's it's dueling pianos and they literally play old songs to like songs that just came out yesterday. Like it is such a fun vibe and they just know their craft so well and they could just play all these amazing songs and everyone just kind of like sings along and all Sounds this so stuff. Fun. Sounds so much fun. But um jelly rolls. It's I like know such jelly a funny rolls. Name for it, it's so a place good. like that. Yeah, I but love you it. remember it. It's like hard to forget that name. For sure. Um That's but funny. the last one and the resorts that we are going to be talking about tonight is Trader Sam's, which is our favorite place to get drinks. Yeah. All around. Oh, my gosh. 
I was Say really excited around, about yeah, Trader yeah. Sam's. Um, all around, Trader Sam's is the best place for drinks, in our humble opinion, because yeah. we love that tropical vibe. So sure. Trader Sam's in Disney World is found at the Polynesian Resort. Um, it's just an awesome vibe overall. Just very fun and tropical. Great drinks. My favorite drinks. Oh, and sure. the bartenders are so cool. They're so funny. They just add so much to the overall experience at Trader Sam's. So cannot recommend Trader Sam's enough. Seriously. They're so amazing. Um, with that, we are headed to the West Coast. We're going to Disneyland. Um, a, a little bit less because it is a smaller resort. Yeah. But um, we're going to jump into Disneyland Park itself. And we already talked about Ogre's Cantina. So this is... Um, this is Same really thing. the only place to get cocktails in Disneyland, except like unless you're going to Club 33, which yeah. is incredibly hard to are, get into. Tell us how you are because we yes, want to go tell to. us. Uh, br <laughs> please bring us into Club 33. We need uh, in. <laughs> they have amazing cocktails as well, which we've made, but have never been. Sadly, yeah. um, but Ogus Cantina is going to be the only place that you get cocktails in Disneyland. Also, kind of hard to get into. You definitely have to get reservations. So look into that process. Try to get in there. The other one, um, Blue Bayou, uh, which is in Disneyland as well, you also have to get reservations for. And they just recently this year, I believe. No, actually, I think Last it was 2021. Year. Yeah, yeah. Um, Blue by you, you can now get beer and wine and, um, and the hurricane, which is a new Orleans inspired cocktail. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are the only two places. So you can't really like walk up, grab a drink and walk around the park, just like magic kingdom. So it's very specific to the place that you're going to go. But, um, yeah. for California adventure, this is going to be the only other park that is in the Disneyland resort. Um, and they have a lot more drink options. So if you want to start Definitely. us off with Car Carthay Circle. Yeah, yeah. so Carthay Circle, you've probably seen. It is at the end of Buena Vista Street. It's that beautiful building that is modeled after the theater where Snow White premiered. We yeah. all know that place. And it is such a staple in that California adventure vibe um, at the end of Buena Vista Street. So... It's a restaurant, but lots of great cocktails as well. Also kind of like old Hollywood theming a little yeah. bit. Kind of different, I think, from the Brown Derby. But very focused on like back when Walt came here and, you know, got himself going in California. So really cool vibe in there. We've only been one time before, but it was great. They have... I think the bar itself is downstairs, which you yeah, might you actually. Drink, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I think you can probably go to the bar without actually having a reservation for food, which is upstairs. Um, so you can just go to the bar itself and get drinks at Carthay Circle, which I don't know why we don't do that more often. Yeah, I believe you're able to. I think. I th yeah. Don't quote At least us on last that. time we, we, we went. I feel like we were just able to yeah. go. We were but waiting for we also for had reservations yeah. already, so it could have been due to that. But regardless, yeah. check it out. Uh, it's it's like a very special thing to be able to do to go to Carthay Circle. So yeah. even if you just go for drinks, check it out. It's an awesome visit. Yeah, and definitely. And it's very it's very swanky. It's very like yeah. nice, very like 1920s, 30s, you know, Californian, yeah. uh, which is great. Um, if you are wanting kind of like this middle of the ground, like more Disney experience, but not too, um, not overly Disney, mm -hmm. Lamplight Lounge, we always recommend. Uh, oh, yeah. This is one you also have to get reservations at. Um, but as we asked this question on our Instagram, we had the most people uh, Everyone respond to Lamplight Lounge. Lamp Lounge. So we had... We had Man Bear Drew, Briz, Brizzy P, Brizzy Pie, Brizzy Pie. I think it's, I think it's <laughs> way better than what I said. Uh, Sam Stringer, 360, and then the Market House podcast. And they all said Lamplight Lounge because this place is right on the water in uh, Pixar Pier. Mm -hmm. um, 
has some really amazing food and drinks that are like Disney inspired, but not like overly Disney, Pixar. but very All yeah, Pixar inspired. Um, I had a ratatouille there once, was which was amazing. But all the drinks are like Pixar inspired and are like very upscale mm -hmm. and delicious. And very if you go to our reels, cocktails. yeah, very quality. If you go to um, our reel tab and just scroll down, we've made the scream canister, the open ocean with the splash, sunrise spectacular, right? And yeah, then yeah, yeah. a couple other ones um, from Lamplight Lounge. They just make quality Disney. Oh, the smoking one. Cocktails. We made that one too. Yeah, yeah we've made really a lot from Lamplight Lounge. They have great cocktails. It's like they're very, very quality cocktails, but the vibe at Lamplight just cannot be beat. It's not like you need to be like fancy to go there. It's not like that vibe, but everything there is just very good quality. It's yeah. just, it's one of the best places for food and drinks, I would say. I totally agree. New Zealand. I, I agree. Um, do you want to go for the next one? Sure. Next is the Hollywood Lounge, um, which is basically as you're walking down through Hollywood Land in California Adventure, it's like off to the left where like the Monsters Inc. ride is. There's a place called the Hollywood Lounge where you can get drinks. And we don't go here super often. I don't know why. Yeah. I know we have it's in the nice past. because there's like cocktails to go. Like, yeah. It's a quick, quick and easy. beer, like beer cocktails to go. Yeah. Like, I don't, you easy. know what? Next time we go, we're making it a thing to go there. Yeah. For some reason, it's not like one of our go-tos, but I bet they have great stuff. And Lulu B, who has been a friend and fan of ours for a while, we actually got to meet her a couple months ago in the park, which was amazing. But she recommended the Hollywood Lounge um, on Instagram. She yeah. said it's a good place. So I think we need to check it out next time we're there. Because it's, yeah. Yeah. You have before. I recall that we've gotten drinks. We've gotten but some beers from there time. and some quick cocktails like in the past, but we don't go there as much as we should. Yeah, I think we need to. Yeah, and if you are a Michelada fan, which we aren't, we're not like Michelada or uh, what's it called Vladimir fans. Any of those like, savory cocktails? Of the, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just not about that. But they do <laughs> have. A, I've seen so many Micheladas be brought out of the Hollywood Lounge, so. Um, this is your place to go if you are a Michelada fan and, um, and apparently people love them. So yeah. I usually get the beer and the to go cocktails here and it's just great. I, we usually go into the, um, animation building, uh, which is just so great to just like chill in there with a yes. nice drink, cool off. Oh my gosh. Um, that saved and, my day the last time that we were in the park in April. Oh my gosh, yeah. It was the hottest day ever. And we got to just go sit in the Animation Academy. Chris with beer, beer with, yeah. And just watch Disney scenes playing around us. And it was the best break in that day. I think we spent an hour just sitting in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Great. Letting so our nice. child run around and watch all the scenes on the screens. It was great. Oh, for sure. Um, next up, we got the Cozy Cone, which mm -hmm. actually the interesting thing about the Cozy Cone is they're like certain cones do different food and different drinks. But yeah. um, we did have to add this in here. Um, you know, this wasn't originally on our list, but we got someone from Instagram. We got um, XOXO underscore cat who said that the pomegranate vodka was so good. And I, I shared that, and then someone else was like, yeah, that's amazing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, we haven't gotten this. How so did I don't even know that the Cozy Cone had alcohol there? I know. We always get I the mac and cheese. Oh, the mac God. cone. I, I'm hungry. Man. I need to yeah, eat Yeah, no, right I now. want a mac and cheese cone. But I really only knew about food there. Yeah, apparently they I didn't know turned. that they had drinks and cocktails. Yeah. But, yeah, they this crush. pomegranate vodka drink sounds delicious yeah it's a pomegranate almost like limeade kind of deal and uh yeah I that make sounds that. amazing we'll yeah we should make that sometimes we'll make it we'll definitely make it sometime uh, but definitely gotta check that out but do you want to hit us with the next yes. one actually let's just like i'm gonna move these up here uh because we should just talk beer in general so for all those beer drinkers out there, we're going yeah, we'll to talk two little options here about beers. Yes. Yeah, so 
the one that we go to, actually, I guess we go to both of these pretty Yeah, often. we go to both, yeah. There's yeah. not really any particular one that we check out more often. But Bayside Brews is a great place for beer. It's found kind of like, is it considered Pixar Pier still? I, I would say it's on the boardwalk. On the, but it's yeah. in that area kind of where... Incredicoaster and Midway Mania, close to the, a little bit. The Ferris wheel. Yeah, cl- yes, kind of close. Mu- yeah, well. closer to the Ferris wheel. That's true. Um, and it's just a little like beer, not cart, but like a just kind of a booth. little shack. Yeah, yeah, like booth. a beer thing, okay. a jig, a beer thing. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but they have great beers. Um, they have a nice selection of you know. Blondes and IPAs and like all your standard beer selections. So we definitely hit this one up pretty often. Yeah, and they do snacks there too. So there's like yeah. pretzels and there's a small pretzels <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we've only got the pretzels from here. But <laughs> Corn Dog Castle is super close nearby, yeah. so it's like oh, beer, Corn Dog Castle. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, but whenever I am wanting like a nice crisp. Crispy boy, uh, yeah, crispy. as we're walking around the California Adventure, I really prefer um, Pacific Wharf Distribution Company. Yeah, this I is think we go right here outside. Often. Yeah, this is near the Pacific Wharf. Um, they always change the names, but the Pacific Wharf thing. Pacific I think Wharf it's just thing. Pacific Wharf. Pacific <laughs> Wharf. Okay, uh, where all the different like restaurants are, or whatever. There's a little beer cart there, and we they have a very good beer. variety of beers. And I mm. love grabbing grabbing like a little hazy here. And uh, just having a good time. So beers, you're definitely going to want to check out Bayside Brews, Pacific Wharf Distribution Company. Crush it up. And it's yeah. amazing. Great um, beers. Great beer options at those two places. If you're if you're into craft beer, definitely these are the places to go. Yeah. And right by there, do you want to talk about? Bam. Yes. I'm switching it up. In the same area where the Pacific Wharf Distribution Co. is. Is another place that we like to hit up pretty often, and it's called Rita's Baja Blenders. Um, they have margaritas that are delicious. They have like a strawberry one and a lemon one. Yeah, super delicious. They also have sangria, which is so good. I've had that there as well. Um, definitely nothing like fancy or like crazy quality i mean it's kind of just like it's probably like pre-made stuff that they just give to you but it is good it's good stuff i've definitely been there a time or two and can recommend it because it's usually fairly quick sometimes the line can get a little long but it's not too bad and it's a good place to get you know a nice refreshing margarita or sangria we did have a follower on instagram loving the layover mentioned that this was a favorite of theirs as well so yeah good one to check out good stuff for sure um and then this wasn't on our list just because it's a little bit more newer uh but we are going to we are going to add this pim's tasting lab uh in avengers uh campus Mm. and they have some very uh cool interesting wild uh cocktails here um we've gotten like the beer cocktails the the bocktails <laughs> uh, um uh the just whatever you'd call them yeah, yeah they don't call them off the bocktail yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't really call them that but uh a lot of times they have like cocktails and then you can add beer to them and it like adds a new uh flavor Mm-hmm. to it and um uh, it's very and, interesting yeah i some are hits some are misses some are you know really good the, the snacks they're really really good but there's a lot of drinks there that are really amazing as well mm-hmm. and we got hit up by country critters on instagram um about pim's, pim's tasting lab we know that riley on main street is like a huge pim's fan as well she always says that she grabs a drink from pim's and goes on Guardians. That's like her deal. And honestly, that is such a great idea. And yeah. you need to do it sometime. I just kind of get a little, get your buzz on and then just, <laughs> just drop up. You as know? long as you're not going to get a sick stomach, I'm all for it. Oh, just for be, sure. Just be careful about it. Um, but yeah, it's cool that you can get the drinks like with or without the beer added in. Like you can get beer by itself, 
but you can also get cocktails by themselves or you can get them mixed together. It's just kind of like a cool thing that is Pim's. For sure. It's like the only place that does that. So check out Pim's. Um, next up, we have the Mendocino Terrace. This is like when you're coming around to like almost be at Pixar Pier is up on your right, like like by Cars Land. It's like very close to Cars Land. I have heard people mention drinks from here a lot, and we have yet to actually do it ourselves. But I've heard that they have great drinks. I'm assuming great wine and also great cocktails. So definitely check it out. Yeah. Now that is it for the actual parks. We're going to quickly go through downtown Disney uh, to start us off. I guess I'll, I guess I'll start here. Yeah. Uh, so you could go back up there. Um, Ballast point brewery. Obviously Ballast point is such a popular SoCal brewery. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they are in downtown Disney now is just huge. So, cool. so amazing. Um, amazing, amazing beer. And we have not gone to the location in downtown Disney. Heard it's awesome, but we've had many of their beers before in the past. And so to have that on draft in downtown Disney, super, super awesome. So if you are a beer fan, definitely check this out in downtown mm-hmm. Disney. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's it's been on our list for a while to do, but it's always packed. So it is packed. So definitely expect try to call that yeah, if you're going to yeah. go. Expect a long wait. Maybe go quite early so that if there is a wait you're ready for it 7 a.m baby (laughs) maybe not quite that early but um next obviously we have trader sam's again and this is in the design hotel area it's like by the pool if you're staying there um so trader sam's and um the tangaroa terrace are kind of connected tangaroa terrace is like the food side of things i believe um but it's like the it's all in the same area if you're like sitting outside it's all kind of connected so you can get drinks from trader sam's and like food from the terrace i think at the same time so that is really cool i love obviously i've already talked about it i love love trader sam's it's my favorite sitting inside or outside is such a fun experience um the bartenders are amazing they're hilarious and it's just the best time the best drinks best vibe best vibe yeah for sure and we got hit up by Philip underscore Rogers and it's Lauren underscore Renee. Uh, we know these people and we know that they love um, Trader <laughs> Sam's and we yes, love we Trader Sam's. Um, We've been there we, with we them once about, or yeah, twice, yeah. as a matter of fact. <laughs> so good. Uh, so next up, we have Black Tap. This is another place that we have not been, uh, but we've heard, I mean, the line's always so long. To yep, go there, it's almost kind Bell's of like a point. quick serve service, right? Like you have to wait in line, yeah. And then you get your your stuff, and then you go find a seat. But apparently, there's a great beer selection here as well. Um, and that's pretty much all I could say about it because we have not been. But um, but supposedly they have really great shakes as well. Yeah, like I heard a shakes. lot about so the since this shakes. is kind of about drinks, anyways. <laughs> the yeah. milkshake portion of it is kind of what's the most popular about. Black tap from what I've heard. Yeah, for sure. I have some really, really crazy shakes. So good. Um, so last on our list is the Uva Bar in downtown Disney. And that's kind of like situated directly in the middle of downtown Disney. It's not like in any of the other buildings or restaurants. It's just a bar directly in the middle of downtown Disney. And we have never actually been to the Uva Bar. I know. How have we not done that at this point? We're always so fixated on going to the parks. That and we Trader Sam's. Stuff. Like, we're always headed there. If we're going to go drink somewhere, it's always Trader Sam's. But Uva is like, I mean, that, like, that would be such Uva a looks fun like, thing. Uva looks like a fun environment that we have not experienced yet. Yeah. It's, it's right in the middle of everything, which is nice. You can just get your drink, go shop, go eat somewhere else. Like, it's, it's, it's a fun fun environment for sure and i think we need to check it out next yeah time. definitely super fun party vibe uh for sure if you're going for that let's say you're going for a birthday or a wedding 
Uva Bar is the place to be uh, in downtown uh, Disney for sure. Um, but yeah. with that, I mean, That's there's it. so much, there's so much that so we talked about, much. but also so much that has been left out because there yeah. is a lot of adult oh offerings at Disney parks. I can't even imagine how much we probably missed. And if we missed anything that was your favorite, I apologize. Let us know. Yeah. But if you made it to the end of this list, congratulations, because this was a lot to take in for this episode, both Disney World and Disneyland and Disney Springs and downtown Disney. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for hanging in with us. It was a fun thing to chat about. We love to talk about all of our drinking spots and the ones that we have yet to check out. So, Thanks for sticking in with us. Definitely. And we just want to thank you so much for all the support for our show. Whether you're listening on YouTube or podcasting platforms, it really means so much. We just love you guys so much and just really appreciate all the uh, interactions, whether that's social media or on uh, these podcast platforms or mm-hmm. YouTube. But we will see you guys next week for another episode and uh, have a great week and we'll see you then. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Bye.